quick tidbit for everybody. Because uh, I had a couple comments saying it was irresponsible of me to say you should be moving from CrowdStrike because of the deployment and the footprint being so big. And if you've done enterprise IT work, that is no small endeavor to say you need to kick CrowdStrike to the curb. But I wanted to make a list for those people out there that are dealing with CrowdStrike and how you should not just clean this up and pretend like business is normal. So I totally understand where you're coming from and I understand you're going to be way overworked for the next month or two and you don't want to switch from CrowdStrike because that's going to be a lot of extra labor but you're going to have to here's my rationale and I did say in the video yes you need to move and the big thing is they've had a lot of bad updates one you could there's a there's a debate of whether or not it, the software is properly engineered with how it sits on the ring zero and it's not using a WHQL certification with how it injects that extra code. I'm not going to make that case. I don't know enough about software to tell you that's a bad design. It seems like a bad design on its head, but let's just not even bring that up. The big thing here is, one, we've had kernel, kernel panics back in June of 2022 on rail-based systems, meaning uh, most Red Hat implementations, CentOS, those types of things that had CrowdStrike loaded on them did have kernel panics and also basically blue-screened Linux boxes. Before this happened, that was a month ago. Also, at the end of June, there was another issue with a CrowdStrike update that spiked CPU usage to 100% on one core and what this required to fix was a reboot of that system so another bad crowd strike that's actually two bad ones and then obviously the global outage which has been covered extensively by every single news outlet known to man that's also i'm not gonna you know open up an old wound there but also the ceo being um the cto of mcafee in 2010 when there was also another global outage when mcafee <laughs> accidentally deleted sdc host in 2010 that was kind of kind of funny one too uh, i'd never dealt with that mainly because who uses mcafee uh it didn't happen in business back in 2010 most businesses especially any business i was a part of even back then, the name McAfee was kind of already in the mud, so I never thought about using it. So I never dealt with that either or CrowdStrike. But one last thing, which I don't see anybody talking about, is the CrowdStrike not honoring client staging options. Specifically, you could sign up to honor the in in one update policy. This was never actually followed by CrowdStrike. So instead of it being staged and, and tested by their clients, they broke their trust and, and pushed it to every single client, including those that should not have been in, in part of the in one update policy. And they pushed it anyways. So having said all these bad updates and then them on also not honoring the staging, obviously you have to move from CrowdStrike. Um, so the big thing here is for any residential people watching this, you don't really need to buy any of ours. If you're on a Windows user, just, just use Defender at this point. Don't need to pay for antivirus. There's no really point of this. So for people that aren't MSPs or enterprise users, just, just stick on Windows Defender. Uh, for alternatives, Huntress is probably the number one I see pushed by most most friends I, I still have in the industry. They, they swear by Huntress. They love it. Uh, very lightweight, relatively affordable, about $5 a seat. It goes down to about two to three dollars a seat for 500 plus users and you can kind of haggle these rates depending on where you're at in between that but just to give you guys a a, a basic starting point alternatives on top of that is black point security and then sentinel one uh sentinel one i've dealt with i haven't really dealt with black point so i really don't have any feelings i just wanted to throw out an alternative uh, sentinel one's kind of bloated and it's real noisy uh at least when i tried it and I, I wasn't a big fan, but I at least wanted to give these. So if you do want like a ton of reporting and you don't mind the client being a little heavier, Sentinel One would be a decent solution. It would still give proper security. All three of these would be far better than CrowdStrike. And then for the others, uh, like the name brands like Bitdefender, Webroot, and all those other ones, uh, I mean, I guess it's okay in an SMB environment and they're super cheap. So you could probably get these for pennies, you know, less than probably a dollar uh, a dollar a seat. And that wouldn't be bad for like maybe an SMB where you could yell down the hall and be like, Hey, 
Hey, Bob. Hey, stop downloading the alternative video player. Not cool, bro. Not cool. You just, you got to stop that. Uh, those those would be okay for for that type of scenario. But obviously in the enterprise space, most of these brand names have no, you have no business using in a large environment. So that's my, my take on the CrowdStrike update as well. Yeah. <laughs> or just switch to Linux. <laughs> just switch every like thousands of seats on your enterprise to Linux and I uh, just see the mayhem that would unfold on top of that. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to do a video on this. I, I haven't released this article yet, but I thought I'd overview it, it, it on stream just, just so, you, you know, people can kind of get a feel and get a little bit of an update on, on the CrowdStrike. But yeah, ditching third-party antivirus and just doing Windows Defender, I think is fine. Gaming fan, you're good. You're You're solid on that. What's the best for personal use? If you have to ask, Windows Defender's fine. I think just sticking with it. The days of buying an antivirus for personal use are pretty much over. You should always stay away from all internet security products uh, in the residential space, as most of them will make your computer run slower than is if you got a virus. So they're not helpful, I think, in the residential space. I say just rock Windows Defender. In, in that space. For the enterprise, you do need reporting. You do need to know when your computers, when your users do something stupid, because at the end of the day, none of this, what we just talked about matters. If the user's a complete idiot, life finds a way and <laughs> that person will infect that computer. You know, uh, the problem's always between the chair and the keyboard. It, it's, it's just the nature of the beast. Uh, so more users you got to deal with, uh, that's obviously a bigger head of it, but you just need to know when they do something stupid and get some kind of protection. And those ones I mentioned in the enterprise space are pretty good at basically blocking the worst types, which is like your ransomwares. So Huntress, Sentinel one, and, and probably, uh, what was the other one? Black point cyber would be probably my three recommendations. And obviously, uh, <laughs> yeah, don't don't go torrent this stuff. Defender is just fine. <laughs> don't 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 go doing any of that. But those that would be my things for those MSPs out there looking for alternatives and saying I'm I got to get off CrowdStrike. Those would be my uh, go tos, and I want the a good distribution of them because I think CrowdStrike had too much of the market share. I think they had a fantastic marketing team, and they forgot to put money back in the engineering team. And that's what led us to this massive global outage because they were able to really cinch up quite a bit of the market.